Father, I thank you that the people watching this program today will be blessed by what you have to say to them. And their lives will change for the better. In Jesus' mighty name, we seal this prayer with the word of God, the fire of the Holy Spirit, and the whole armor of God. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. If you can go with me, this is an introduction to step number four in Destiny Settled. Everyone, every Christian needs their destiny settled, receiving all that God has for them. Like Joseph, at the end of his life, he never had a bad day. After he stepped out of the prison doors and he became vice president to the world, Ruth and Naomi, when they reached their destiny, married Boaz, had their son, both of them snapped out of every pass that they had, their destiny settled. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Daniel, after they went through their nightmare and came out of it with a faith test passed, they never had a bad day again in their life. They passed 1 Peter 5.10 before it was even written. 1 Peter 5.10 talks about the five steps to get your destiny. And I'm in step number four. Step number four is a massive step all by itself. And that's why it's the step prior to the destiny. Number five is receiving your destiny, your settlement, your settlement, not just, not just receiving your natural settlement, but your supernatural settlement as well. So there is the natural and the supernatural. There's the flesh and the spirit. God had to send Jesus to get to earth to get us fleshly people to understand what it was like to have a spirit and be a spirit and communicate with the spirit, which is the Holy Spirit. So we have two realms we have to look at, not one. The wealthy, they look at how much is in their bank account, they look at how many cars and houses they have and how many entertainment uh, programs they have going on and they don't look at their spirit man. Their spirit man is starved. Their spirit man needs Jesus Christ. You can have both. You can have both as long as you serve God with your natural realm. Nothing wrong with having money. Nothing wrong with having fancy cars. Nothing wrong with having fancy houses. As long as your spirit man, the spirit man inside you, the spirit inside you that looks just like you, that when your body dies, lives forever, goes somewhere. And if all you focus on is feeding the natural, you clothe the natural, feed the natural, and you don't feed and clothe the spirit man, it will die and it will end up in hell. For the wages of sinners, death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That's the Word of God. How do you feed your spirit man? Be in the Word at least five minutes a day. Pray to God at least five minutes a day. Worship to the Lord at least five minutes a day before you begin your day and right before you go to bed. That's the best way to do it. So it's the first thing on your mind and the last thing on your mind before you rest and recoup for the day. Amen. So the fourth step is strengthening. And this strengthening steps into its own series, which I told you on another video that we were working on three different series at, at churches and meetings around the world. At my church, we're speaking on this one right now. And this is just called Spiritual Warfare. Why deal with it when you can deliver it? Why deal with it when you can deliver it? A lot of people believe that witchcraft and uh, anything of the demonic realm is prevalent in third world countries, Africa, um, India, China. It's true, but it is not prevalent there only. It's prevalent in America. It's prevalent in Europe. It's prevalent in Russia. It's prevalent in South America. It's just called a different name. They happen to call them witch doctors over in Africa. They happen to call them psychics and mediums and tarot card readers. Here in America, they just have a different name. Different method, all the same head. And that head is Satan. That head is Lucifer. That head is the demonic realm, the dark realm that has 12 strong men and thousands of little demons underneath those strong men. Jesus Christ, this is the introduction. You're gonna watch the, the uh, message or the message, I should say, is available to you on the video um, from the churches uh, preaching around the world. But right now, this is the introduction, just so you understand where we're coming from. Uh, Jesus Christ had 12 disciples. Satan has to copy everything that Jesus does. So he has to have 12 
strong men. And these strong men are big demons that are over regions, big demons that are the principalities and powers are rulers of darkness. This is all spoken of in Ephesians chapter 6. The same Ephesians chapter 6 that you must put the whole armor of God on you so you can stand against these traps of the devil. Just like your children, they need to know. Stand against the traps of the devil to defeat them. So, read Ephesians chapter 6. It's amazing. But I'm teaching you uh, on this, on this spiritual warfare. Why deal with it when you can deliver it series right now? Satan's 12 strong men. Jesus said in, let me read this to you. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 12, verse 29. How can one enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man and then he will plunder his house? In other words, when you go to kick out a demon or pray for a, an addiction or uh, something to be gone from the person's life, uh, you need to pray the root of the problem out or you need to pray the boss out uh, let's say let's, for instance like we have two companies and one company buys out the other company but before the bosses change positions the one starts firing the other man's uh, employees and putting his own in and eventually the owner comes out and he says who, who told you to leave I didn't tell you to leave I'm still the boss here get back to work and this is why Little demons, little addictions come back and they're not completely gone. Because you have to get rid of the owner and when the owner leaves, everything goes with it. When the owner leaves, they take the furniture, they take the family, they take everything. But if you just take little pieces, the eviction is not done, the deliverance is not complete. So you must go after the boss. Who's the boss? This is why Jesus would say to the demons, who are you? When someone is caught uh, here on this earth, or, or someone needs to be caught, I should say, and they have committed a crime, the FBI and the police, they want to know who did this. They want to put a name with a crime so they can eliminate them and get them out of society or eliminate them and get them off the streets, or eliminate them and get them corrected. So in the spirit realm, it's the same way. Remember, Jesus said in his template prayer, template prayer, remember it's a powerful, the most powerful template prayer any of us could use. It's not the only prayer we pray, we, we pray. it's the basic, it's the template we build off of this. It's the most powerful template that every prayer should be prayed off of and every message should be built off of, complete in one prayer. He said, on earth as it is in heaven, our Father which art in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, holiness. Your will be done on earth, right here in my life, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Not just on Sunday, not just on Wednesday. On earth as it is in heaven. Give me this day my daily bread, not my weekly bread, not my monthly bread, not my bi-weekly bread, not my yearly bread, bi biannual. Uh, no, my daily bread, the word of God. Hallelujah. Uh, he says, give me my daily bread and forgive me of my trespasses. In other words, repent of your sins every day as I forgive those that I hurt and that have hurt me. And then, you, then he goes on to say, lead us not into temptation. In other words, keep me from evil. If, if I'm reading the Word of God, I'm not going to want to watch that program. If I'm reading the Word of God, I'm not going to want to uh, look at things on my iPad or my phone that Jesus would not look at. I would, I would not want to cuss and swear and laugh at dirty jokes and go to parties and places and be a part of people that have nothing to do with the Holy Spirit of God. You just automatically feel out of place because that's not your destiny. That's not your settlement. That's not your place. That's not your calling. And that's surely not your eternity. And we have to be eternity minded. Everything we do, we must be eternity minded, which means Jesus is standing over the balcony of heaven or in wherever he can be. He can be any.
This is standing over the balcony of heaven or in wherever he can be. He can be anywhere. He can be right in your living room. He could come visit you in your dream, come visit you standing right by your desk. The Holy Spirit is right there next to you. Or he's right there inside you. He is listening or she or it or whatever you want to phrase it to be. It's an authentic spirit. The Holy Spirit is right there with you. Knows, sees, hears everything you're doing. So don't offend the Holy Spirit and do something or say something that would make him No. Always keep the Holy Spirit happy. Now, let's get back to the spiritual warfare. Why deal with it when you can deliver it? Message. Twelve strong men that the devil has. I will be explaining every one of these 12 strong men in portions so you get it. If I grouped it all together, you would miss it. And the part that you miss, the devil will attack. Never, ever leave an open door for the devil. Never leave an open door for the devil. May I say it again? Never leave an open door for the devil, period. Because he will run through it and run you right over. Jesus Christ had the hand of the Lamb the hand of the lion, kind, sweet, nice, loving, compassionate, caring for the poor, not condemning, not condescending, surely not Leviathan. And then there's the hand of the lion, for what? To rebuke the enemy, to fight against Satan and his powers, so he will win. We have the keys to the kingdom of heaven, which is the word of God, the blood of Jesus, the whole armor of God, the fire of the Holy Ghost. Ooh, we have so many weapons. Come on, get out of my way, Satan. Jesus had two hands, the hand of the lamb and the hand of the lion, balanced. So many people think that they can't, they can't pick up their weapon and fight the enemy with the word of God, with prayer with what I'm about to teach you in these series. You have to know your enemy and get him out of your house, verbally with authority. Amen? If you don't have two hands, you're off balance. If you're too nice, the devil will run you right over. And if you're too hard, you have no love. You're no good. You must be balanced. Must be balanced. The hand of the lamb and the hand of the lion. Now, these 12 strong men are listed. The Bible verses are with them. Every one of them are in the Word of God. And there are hundreds of thousands of little demons underneath them. The first thing you want to do is recognize it in yourself. Don't think of someone, oh, I know somebody that's like that. That's the devil trying to get you to avoid looking at yourself. Of course, we can pray for them later. But the Bible says, Jesus says, pick the plank out of our own eye before we pick the speck out of someone else's. I have gone through deliverance over and over and over again. And I believe every single Christian that is on their way to heaven, the devil is trying to get on their back constantly, waiting outside their door constantly, bothering their children, their finances, their future, their favor constantly to try to get them um, at least tapped into his world to sin so he can try to destroy so you ultimately miss heaven. The bottom line is, is we need to stay away from every distraction, every lure that the enemy has, and stay focused on God Almighty. Stay focused on what Jesus Christ has given us in his word, as our, his instruction book, the B-I-B-L-E, basic instructions before leaving earth. Let's use it. Let's do it. Why not? It's the best instruction book ever. And every problem on this earth, every problem on this earth is solved through this word. Every problem is solved through this word. Amen. So these hundreds of thousands of little demons, they answer to the big one. I'm just going to give you one as an example. Addictions, 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 addictions. Marijuana, which is never meant to smoke. Marijuana, which was never meant to smoke. The devil twists what God has and uses it for his way. He twists what God has and uses it for his way. Marijuana was meant for nice, soft lotion, 
for um, medication uh, that has no side effects to it, no negative, but it kills the pain in the body. Israel has uh, uh, has dominated that. They have found that out where the devil tried to grab a hold of it and use it in another way, just like Easter and Christmas, the only two holidays that have a counterfeit. The Easter Bunny and Santa Claus have nothing to do with Jesus Christ, so we had to throw a counterfeit in there to get you distracted. And it's so entertaining, it's harmless. It's very harmful. You need to focus on the real meaning, and that's it. Let the world focus on what the devil has in store, not you. Let the world focus on the counterfeit, not you as a Christian, as a believer. Change your ways today. Change your ways today. We all need deliverance. We all need deliverance. If there's any of us out there to say, oh, I don't need deliverance, you're probably the first one that needs it. So I'm speaking for myself. I know I live this. Oh, my goodness. <clears throat> I didn't realize that this problem and this and this and this came from that stinking demon that was on my back probably from four generations back trying to get its way through to filtrate through the entire family to destroy 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 so it's our job as Christians to get him off our back put him in his place send him back to the pit of hell first you apply the blood of Jesus over yourself the fire of the Holy Ghost and the whole armor of God and then you command that foul spirit out with authority if you speak to him nicely if you speak to him nicely, they'll laugh at you. But if you speak with authority, you no, know, I know the word of God works. This is what he told me to do. Now get out. Now when you serve an eviction notice to somebody, they don't want they don't pack up their bags and leave the first day. It's a fight. So you have to wear that demon out with the prayer and the, and the consistency and getting out of my life, get out of my finances, my family, my future, my favor ministry business all of it and eventually they get tired of it you wear them out because they hate the name Jesus they hate the blood of Jesus they can't stand the fire of the Holy Ghost oh the, the fire of the Holy Ghost burns them right out they become hot they are irritated and they leave amen so many many deliverances many exorcisms this ministry does and I pray that we get a chance to do millions of more exorcism on adults and children alike all over this earth to set them free so their life changes and that problem, that issue, that situation, that negative is gone out of their life in Jesus' mighty name. I was speaking of the strong men of bondage found in Romans 8, 15. The strong men of bondage is the boss, the strong man for all these silly addictions like marijuana, alcohol, um, prescription drugs, cigarettes, and even cigar smoking, all of it, none of it is of God because it's not healthy for your body. There is a boss. If you say, oh, he drinks, we need to get rid of that alcohol, that demon of alcohol, that demon of nicotine has to go. And the demon of nicotine, he, he doesn't like it, so he'll leave, but then his boss will say a week or two later, get back where you belong. I didn't kick you out. They don't know who I am. Hosea 4, 6 says, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Let me teach you today, go after the boss. And when you go after the strong man, as Matthew 12, 29 says so, once you kick the boss out, all the little demons automatically go with them. Once the new employer buys out the other employer, then he's welcome to take all of the people with him and put his own people in there. So. Uh, you have to work on the strong man. There's 12 strong men, and as we get into them, you'll see uh, how easy it is, once you know who the enemy is, to get the problems out of your life. Jesus gave you the key.